Many people thought, and I think even uh, President Uru Kenyatta thought, once he ditches William Ruto, the Mount Kenya block will follow him. Yeah, if you look at the way the script was played, everyone thought that would be a natural consequence. But definitely, things did not pan out that way. The Mount Kenya block has largely remained supportive of Ruto. The Rift Valley community, it feels very indebted that uh, despite the persecution of the people of Mount Kenya by the government, despite a lot of tribulations, uh, the people, the common man, has remained strongly in favor of Ruto in Mount Kenya. The people of Mount Kenya have gotten back their political dignity. I think history will be written one day that the historical bastardization of the Kikuyu community, the historical maligning of the Kikuyu community, that it's a community that does not keep political promises, will be shattered. The guys brought to Gatundu by Moi, uh, 95, um, and, and then introduced uh, and uh, buys on Kano ticket in 97, when the entire central region was uh, um, opposition zone, deep opposition, alongside the uh, Ruo Nyanza and um, uh, Bukusura, those were, you know, the bastions of uh, opposition politics. And that time, um, uh, I was tasked with the, by the rest of the opposition friends because myself and uh, Moses Muya, who became our candidate, were the, were the flag bearers of opposition, alongside Gegi Mugai, you know, Uhuru's own cousin, you know. And, um, of course, we defeated uh, Uhuru Kenyatta and Kano, uh, hands down. 22,000 votes to 10,000 votes with all the Kenyatta name and the Moi system and everything. Uh, what happened is a story for another day. I, I've tried to be, I've tried to understand uh, Uhuru Kenyatta. One of the things that we learn about Uhuru Kenyatta is that he's, he's a rainbow. There are very many colors in him. And sometimes we see he's red, sometimes he's green, sometimes he's blue, and all those things in between. Um, it's very easy when you focus on one thing, to take a very particular strong position. And then later on realize this position does not contradict another opposite position. Uhuru Kenyatta is like that. Although he was seen politically at least as having been born with a silver spoon in his mouth, his entry into politics was particularly harsh. He was literally bullied. And I think he was traumatized. So he lost trust in the entire political process, and especially democracy. He started seeing democracy as roulette. You convert your money into chips, you throw them on a table, it spins, and you have to take what comes out. And he doesn't like that loss of power because the first time he lost power, he lost it completely. Kuru Kenyatta does not trust politics. And so everything around it, the consensus building, the coalition building, the campaigning, the appealing to people, it feels like a casino for him. And you could lose everything, and he hates that. One time that Uhuru Kenyatta was formidable, safe, invincible, was with William Ruto, because he had found the person who, you know, brought in strategic complementarities and made him really shine, made Uhuru unstoppable. 